Do you want to know what is the best starting class vocation for your main pawn? Well, we have some suggestions here on how to set up your pawn as some classes will excel early on in the game. And don't worry, you can always change this later on, but this is great to get you started, particularly if you're new to Dragon's Dogma as a whole. So let's get into it, but do tell us in the comments if you found any busted vocation combos for your pawn down below. After completely finishing the game, one of the best tips that we can give you, especially for 2-6 as someone who didn't play the first Dragon's Dogma game, said that this helped him out massively and it's knowing that using a mage as your main pawn is extremely beneficial. But what makes the mage so good as your main pawn? Well, it offers you a variety of buffs, healing and damage all in one helpful class. One of the more important parts of that is that it can heal you, reducing your downtime and resources used while out questing and fighting monsters, which can be a real game changer, especially especially as you're getting used to the game and trying out new moves and getting to grips with the various systems and mechanics of the game. Here are some things you should look out for when you set up your mage and just your pawn in general. Let's start with your inclination, as this is something that you can do right when you create your main pawn. This might seem unimportant at a first glance, but it actually does impact how your pawn will behave during combat. For example, if you picked the calm inclination, your pawn will focus on dodging attacks, while straightforward will make it focus more on being offensive. For a mage so far, we've found that the kind-hearted inclination works best for us as it makes your pawn focus more on support actions for the player. A great tip to know is that you can actually order your pawn to directly heal you by pressing the help command when you're in need. This is very important because in Dragon's Dogma, your health will work differently than other games as you have a loss gauge mechanic whereby you lose some of your maximum health each time you take damage, meaning you can only get your maximum health back when you rest at camp. So while your mage can't heal you back to maximum health, it can heal the white portion of your health bar, which will be vital in combat to keeping you topped up so you become less vulnerable to dying. The mage class actually has a built-in healing ability with its triangle or Y button press called Anadyne. This conjures a small AoE sphere around them that will heal any allies that go inside of the circle over time. This is going to be one of the main and easiest ways to heal in the game when you have a mage pawn in your party. And it's super useful because you can just use this instead of spending a ton of time farming or buying potions and then consuming them. In addition to this, the mage has some skills that offer great utility. Here are some suggestions for the skills that we recommend you consider for your pawn, as there are quite a few options to choose from and you will unlock more skills and you can upgrade them over time as you level up your pawn's vocation. The Argent Tonic is a skill you get fairly early on, which is a great thing to have in addition to the Anodyne AoE Hill. This is a skill that will instantly and fully heal a single player character, making it very good to have if someone in your party gets clapped by a very heavy hitting attack. Not only does the mage have these healing options, but they also have a number of great buffing skills such as Palladium, which gives you a shield that will surround you with magic clusters that will block three incoming attacks. While the standard version of this only casts it on the mage, the high Palladium upgraded version will cast it on the party, making your entire party a bit more tanky and it's super useful. Next we have the various elemental boon buffs and there are three of these for each element, fire, ice and lightning. If you have these equipped on your main pawn, they will cast this on you all of the time when you get into combat, which will increase your damage massively to foes weak to that element. And it's good to know that later on in the game you can actually get weapons that have elemental damage baked into them, but these elemental boons are great for when you're starting off and generally have been useful to us throughout our whole playthrough. You can even equip your pawn with multiple of these different elemental boons and your pawn will Swap between them. We haven't currently noticed if the pawn will prioritize the elemental weakness of a monster, although this could be due to not having the badges unlocked for the pawns, which grants them knowledge of the various monsters and how you defeat them. If you're looking for a good elemental boon option to take with you, many enemies in the game are weak to fire or ice, with fire being a very common weakness. But just experiment and see what works for you, because we've also seen good results with the lightning boon. Next up is Celerity, or High Celerity in particular, as this is a buff that will cast a sphere similar to the AoE heal, but this time will give you a speed boost, which doesn't sound that appealing when compared to other spells that grant damage or direct healing, but trust me, this one is a lifesaver as you will be doing a lot of walking in Dragon's Dogma 2. Having this buff on makes you just go so much faster, so you can make your playthrough a bit smoother as you travel 
travel around the map. If you don't want to just run buff skills, you can also bring along some of the elemental magic attacks like Flagration, which is essentially a flamethrower move that has a wide area of attack and hits multiple times, making it very easy for the AI to dish out a decent chunk of damage. It also has good range, so it reaches weak points pretty easily. We do like this skill. Now, if you don't want to make your main pawn a mage, but instead the other class vocations, you can do this too because you can also recruit mages from a rift stone as you have two additional pawn member slots in your party for a total size of four. You will need to make sure when hiring another player's mage that they have the right skills on, such as the healing ones we've mentioned. You can do this by changing the tab at the top to see the different skills alongside their stats and a bunch of other stuff about that pawn. It's very important to note that when bringing other players' pawns along with you, they will not level up and gain XP and you cannot change their equipped skills. So you will need to make sure you repeatedly recruit new ones as you level up to fill that slot in your party. This is why having a mage as your own pawn is fairly easy because you can control the buffs and skills you bring with you and of course your main pawn will level up with you unlike hired ones from the rift. When looking for new pawns to fill in your party, you can filter them at the rift by using the search function. Here's a quick tip if you're using this search function at launch and you're having trouble finding anyone. You might want to untick the quest knowledge box as this will usually open up more pawns for you. You. If you have it ticked, you can only search for pawns that have completed your current active quest. We will say we found that Thief and Archer pawns are especially useful early on for hitting those weak points and racking up some good damage. The Thieves will generally climb onto things like Golems and quickly go for the weak points, which really speeds up the fight as a whole. Meanwhile, Archer pawns will generally spam arrows at exposed weak points, so you can really get some good damage in if they have the lethality augment on. Tell us any tips you have for your main pawns down in the comments below so we can all learn together as a community and subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 content coming your way soon.